Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Um, so this is kind of a, I guess, like a work in progress sort of video. Um, just uh, trying out um, a few things. Well, one thing really. Um, I've got a bunch of the Blood Angels that um, I showed in the On the Workbench video last time uh, a few days ago. So they've all been Xenophil primed, as you can see. Um, which, if you're not aware, uh, basically they're all fully primed black after I based them. So I put the base on, basing material on, uh, primed everything black, and then primed everything gray from sort of, let me find something I can point with, sort of like from this angle. So there's just a, a light coating of gray on everything. And then um, where I wanted highlights, such as on the back of the f legs, toes, chest, front of the face, top of the helmet, uh, as you can see where, where the white is, uh, did some white paint. Um, the gray is primer, the white is paint, because everything's been primed already. Um, and so I'm ready to start doing the red for these Blood Angels. Had to look on the GW website. Um, so everything on it is red except for the, the, the actual weapon which is uh, which is black or uh, you know dark um, sort of steel tone um, so yeah uh, ready to start and for this commission I'm using the Mephiston Air Red which I haven't used yet I'm sure there are millions of reviews of this already on YouTube and other pages um, but this is an unopened bottle I got from the 40k open day a few weeks ago um, specifically for this commission. Um, been very hesitant to use it because I hate these Citadel paint pots. I know people say clean the rim and blah 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 um, but you shouldn't have to do that I don't think. Um, I prefer this bottle if we have to use a bottle. This is basically what the Cote d'Armes what uh, Citadel paints used to be in uh, when they were made by Cote d'Armes um, and they're the same as the Privateer Press bottles, or P3, is that right? Yeah, P3. Uh, Privateer Press Paints, I think is what P3 stands for. Um, and basically all I did was decant, pour, pour it out, uh, find these bottles on, first of all, these paint pots on, on eBay or Amazon or whatever, um, pour the paint in, um, throw some thinner in or even just water. Water works fine. Doesn't have to be any special water, just normal tap water. Give it a good shake and then just pour, pour it in. You can use a brush if you want. You lose maybe a few drops of paint, but you'll still have plenty left over. These are 30 mil pots for a 12 mil bottle. So you have plenty. Uh, and then I, well, I got some paint dust on it, but you can see I usually put the uh, color of the paint on the outside. No biggie. However, uh, you'll notice that this is Armageddon Dust, which is a texture paint, so I put it in a paint pot. For the normal paints, and especially the air paints, uh, if I do pick up any more, I put them in these, which are 20 mil bottles, again, off of eBay. 20 mil is plenty enough to pour the bottles in and, and do a bit of a, uh, add, add a little bit of thinner and as the cat goes past and yeah so and then you just peel off the uh, peel off the label stick it on good to go um, the easy way I do this and I didn't really mean to turn this into a tutorial on how to decant your paints or anything but I have this little cardboard jig that I made it's very nasty but it does the job um, rubber band paint pot to the top here and I have a little funnel um, that I tape to the to the to the new bottle, and this is just made from an old um, from an old transfer. Well, from an old, any old uh, thing will do. It's basically one of these, like off of this airbrush thinner pot, and so you know it's the same sort of spout, and yeah, so that's that. So anyway. Um, that's uh, I just wanted to uh, 
I don't know if it's helpful or anything, but you know, it's I'll uh, I'll show why <laughs> the paint pots are the more or the the dropper bottles are the what I I consider them the superior option. Um, if I can attach the airbrush, which is a Renegade Chrome, and it's got a little little leather uh, top cap here that uh, just makes it a little bit easier too. It's got some thinner in it because I was just using it to do the white. You'll see in the background there I've got my D and D fantasy figure. He's a uh, Reaper Bones. The the primer I use is the um, Steinol Res from Badger, which is really really good stuff. Um, lots of people. Um, Pro painters, uh, not just myself, have been using it um, and really like it. I'm just getting the bottle here. That's what the bottle looks like. Uh, and that is a massive bottle of grey, yeah. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of the name, but I'm a fan of the primer. So uh, it does work really well. Um, these guys have been primed for about, in grey for, well, I guess for a couple hours now, a few hours. Uh, and I just put the white on it, uh, on them. So anyway, I'll just put the uh, a little holder here. So I'll just crack this open. And so these bottles are nice for getting just a bit of paint out of the top there, which is fine. You have to shake it and everything. I should shake it before I get paint anywhere. Um, however, keeping them open is is kind of hard because that's that's sort of the natural state for it. This little nib nub in there that I don't know what that is meant to do. It's just meant to keep it closed or keep it open. I, I don't know. It's really annoying, and to really open it up, you have to. You have to properly push that down. I suppose that works. It still drips into the bottle, but you know, they were using these for years. They're still available. Private or press use them. You can buy them. And there you go. That's fine. Look, there's no messing about. So anyway, um, I'm trying not to harp on that too much because I just want to get to the painting. So, um, yeah, with the jars or pots, you have to. You have to be very careful because you get a bit of mess there and you got a bit of mess there and that's annoying. Whereas with, uh, sorry, I don't mean to be jarring the uh, the, bot the uh, camera. It's just, it is in the way. Um, with this, you easily get one drop, there you go, and then that will do you for, obviously you wouldn't use this in an airbrush really, but that, that, is perfectly fine. There's, I don't see how anybody can, and also if you leave this open, it just dries out. You leave that open, you have the tiniest little bit of a pinhole of an opening, a little bit pin, larger than a pinhole maybe, but the tiniest opening and the paint, you can just leave it open. Also, look, okay, a little bit forceful there, but a tiny bit spills out. But how many people have you seen online that spill an entire bottle of known uh, oil or some other wash from GW and you lose half the bottle or more um, and they're overpriced so anyway I'll leave it at that um, so this is my first time using the the airbrush paints uh, from GW I'm trying to get to focus there um, seems okay I mean, the paints are the paints are good. They're just overpriced. So this is complete without thinning. Absolutely no thinning at all. Seems to be fine. I'm running at about I would say about 20 psi. Uh, I do have the, a gauge here uh, on the regulator, but I have I use this thing here also to to lower and raise the uh, air pressure. So uh, seems okay at the pressure I'm using. No dry tip or anything so far. Um, so let's just get to painting. Just going to do a light coat. And this is my first time actually doing any painting on camera here. So 
please excuse me if there's any issues. I'm, I am trying to... I wish you'd hold it further away. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Alright, I have some breakfast making duties to perform. So I'm just trying to... I might have to redo this bit with a dip, with a model in a better location, but and hopefully this is giving a good idea how these are working. So far, I would say pretty good. I don't use the GW paints very often, uh, only when I'm asked. Um, I must say, yeah, pretty good. I mean, absolutely no complaints about the paint so far. Only about the pricing. and the pot design. You might call it a jar, but I live in the UK and generally it's called a pot, so. Alright, let's get inside the leg there a bit. That's pretty good. Good coverage. Um, there's a coat and a light coat on everything. Just need to get inside the arm. So yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. And the zenithal shading, or pre-highlighting, uh, as I like to call it as well, uh, comes out really well. S mm, very little dry tip. I don't know if you can see that there. Just the tiniest bit of dry tip. Generally what I do, uh, after every model anyway, whether I'm priming it or whatever, um, just get a wet... Uh, toothbrush. Just give it a little bit of a scrub. Do a test blow and then we're on. We're on and moving away. So let me just do a second model uh, with a bit of a, bro a wider uh, brush stroke. Until I need to do a little bit of cleaning. You can hear uh, whistling inside the brush. And then I will take a break and make some breakfast and watch some motorbike racing and come back upstairs and finish the rest of these guys. Uh, a little bit heavy there. You see, I'm trying to be a little bit further away with the airbrush while still getting everything. It's basically uh, the same sort of the way I primed these guys. And these guys are going to be painted to uh, tabletop sand, so I don't need to get every single... I do want to get everything you might normally see on the table, but not every single tiny bit. So, yeah. That's uh, Blood Angel number two painted. Try and 
If you hear my voice go away, it's because I'm turning my head to look at the camera, to look at the screen. Uh, and it's just not wanting to focus, is it? There we go. So there you go. Uh, pretty good result, I would say. Sorry about that. Yeah. So you see, um, the amount of time it took to prime was maybe double the amount of time I just took to spray. Uh, uh, at, at least the black, um, gray went really quick. White went about as, this took about the same amount of time as that because um, you just have to look at the model and just see the points like the kneecaps and the toes and things like that that need to be specifically highlighted. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, so we're going, we're going from Xenothal Priming to Red Base Coat. Uh, I don't know, probably about, what, three, four minutes a model? Something like that. So uh, I've just finished um, basing these guys uh, with the new Citadel Air Mephiston Red. Um, quite happy with it, I must say. Uh, it is a good paint. Um, it uh, you know went through the went through the the airbrush pretty well. I used a Renegade Chrome from Badger, uh, which uses uh, I think it's a 0.21 millimeter um, needle, just so it's quite small. I used about between 20 and 30 psi for it just to experiment. Um, uh, if you well. Uh, I'm adding this to the to the video shot before so you will have just seen me doing uh, these two guys uh, with a on the low low end of that uh, air pressure uh, with unthin paint and uh, to finish the rest of the guys I did uh, this after I transferred it to the bottle um, this is the original bottle um, I'll get to why there's water in there uh, in a minute um, but basically I just uh, thinned it a bit added a shaker bead a glass bead inside there uh, to help mix up the pigment and then just sprayed it at about 25 or 30 psi um, uh, directly on there so I'm just as I'm looking at these guys I've noticed there's some some guys I need to hit uh, just some some spots that I've missed that I can spot from here so um, and I'll turn them around as I'm uh, as I'm talking so I can just make sure I cover everything um, but basically yeah the the bottle transfer went fine uh, just poured it straight in um, and then I just added water uh, and mixed it up shook it up really well and then added more water um, well, poured it out, added more water to get the last final bits. You can see, you know, straight through the, th straight through the uh, paint pot now. And basically, I'm just going to let that sit out for a couple of days so it thickens up a bit because otherwise, uh, I'll be thinning down the air just or thinning down the paint a little bit too much. Um, so um, I do help teach some beginners airbrushing and especially wargaming airbrushing courses. Uh, locally um, so I'll be happy to answer any airbrush questions you have um, about mixing and thinning and stuff like that so yeah I hope you've enjoyed um, this this video uh, please like comment share etc um, if there's any more that you'd like to know feel free to ask a comment uh, ask a comment ask a question in the comment section uh, uh, I'll be posting this on Facebook. Uh, the Facebook page is facebook.com, of course, uh, slash tiny plastic spaceman. Um, I'll also be putting it on the website, which is tiny plastic uh, So feel free to ask me a question, drop me an email um, if you want. And uh, yeah, so that has been uh, just, I suppose, an uh, impromptu review of the Citadel Air Mephiston Red. So. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.